Good morning, everybody. It's a finally Friday. Chris Allen here on this February the 17th on the Sam channel, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter, all sponsored by Ace Hardware Marketplace. Well, yesterday, thankfully, we escaped the severe weather. There were a couple of warnings early yesterday, but afternoon, flood warnings, flood advisories, flash flooding in a couple of places, some high water, and some pretty impressive rainfall totals that I'll show you coming up from the Kentucky Mesonet reporting stations. But uh, thanks to the cloud cover that we had for much of the day and those steady rains, that kept us from seeing or witnessing or even getting severe weather yesterday afternoon and evening as the cold front uh, began to push through. Now, it is now east of us this morning. It is over the Virginias and the Carolinas. As you see, now there's plenty of cloud cover still down this morning, and I think we're going to keep this cloud cover for much of the day. Uh, this is moisture that's trapped near the surface, lower levels. And so this is typical this time of the year. You don't have a whole lot of drying out that takes place here behind that front. It is going to get better, uh, but uh, the cloud cover that's there is low-level cloud. It's going to stay with us for much of the day. As that colder air comes in and kind of compresses the atmosphere, we get what's called an inversion, and basically that's just a compression of the air, leftover moisture that has no way to dry out and Therefore, you get the low clouds that are going to stick with us uh, pretty much all day. I mean, there could be a couple of times when we see the sun trying to break through. But as you can see here, also the rain is gone. And now uh, there could be some leftover sprinkles or drizzle to the east. And, you know, temperatures are even starting out chilly enough this morning to maybe some some, not very many, but some could even see a few maybe snowflakes mixing in. Uh, that's going to be primarily north of us and east of southern Kentucky. And uh, even where it does do that, it's not going to be that big of an issue because it's just been too warm and there's not anything to really substantiate uh, any kind of uh, travel issues or anything like that. You'd have to go way north to find that sort of thing happening. Okay, here's a look at the 10-day blender. We put all the models in that we can, put them in the blender, spin it around a few times, and this is what comes out. And uh, you see today we're just going to scrape, and I mean scrape, 40 for a high temperature. By the way, yesterday we had a high of 66 in Bowling Green. Didn't quite hit 70, and I adjusted the forecast from early yesterday morning to late morning because I saw that the clouds were going to hang in here, so unless we had some sunshine, were we going to hit 70 or even the low 70? So I adjusted back into the 60s, and that's where we landed. 66, the high. The average is 51, so that is a 15 degree difference or 15 degrees above average. Today, we're going to be, mm, what, 11 degrees maybe or so, 10 to 11 degrees below average for high temperatures. But as you see here, it's today only. Today is the only really chilly day that we're going to see out of the next 10 days. Tomorrow, we rebound back to 50, then to 60, then into the 60s Monday, Tuesday, and look, the 70s are back. I've always loved the 70s. Disco and, oh, 70 degree temperatures is what I mean. Set Mid-70s, Wednesday, Thursday of next week, and yeah, you, you, you can almost tell what that means because you see a sharp drop again, not as big as this one that we just had, but we go from the mid-70s to the low 50s from next Thursday to Friday. And then we climb right back up again into the upper 50s to low 60s. I don't see anything below average on temperature except for today and tonight. 
tomorrow we go right back to where we should be for temperatures this time of the year. And um, then we then we just stay there in the warmer sector of things for the rest of February. Yeah, that was the rest of February because it's, you know, we're only, what, 28 days for this month. Yep, short month, and it's almost over. All right, let's take a look at those impressive rainfall totals from the Kentucky Mesonet Network. And we usually don't see all these colors on the map when we're talking about rainfall, but my goodness, let's just take a little tour here. Uh, look at this. I think that's Boyle County. Yeah. Danville over four inches of rain. Same thing over in Jackson County in the Eastern part of the state. Let's see here. That's Campbellsville, Taylor County, three inches of rain, exactly three inches of rain, uh, two and a half plus up in LaRue County and Hodgenville. Okay. Now closer to home. You see that uh, we picked up just over two inches at the Corvette plant, Kentucky Mesonet site. Two inches of rain. 1.6 at the Mesonet site out at the, or near the Ag Expo Center here in Bowling Green. Almost two inches of rain in Russellville. And you see, you see all around us just, well, there's, look at Morgantown, Butler County, over two inches of rain. Pretty impressive stuff. And it was up in this Grayson County area from Grayson up to Breckenridge, over three inches of rain. There were several flood warnings in these areas. And I got to tell you, the Green River Basin is going to be running high uh, for the next several days because of that runoff. And uh, the creeks and streams are up. And there still may be uh, even some flooded roadways around the area this morning. So be aware of that as you're going in. The other big deal, the temperatures. Uh, it's much different this morning than it was yesterday. And I can hear the wind. The winds are still up this morning. In fact, let's check the wind before I go to temperature. Uh, winds are coming, as you see the arrows, out of the northwest at 15 to 20 to 25. Pretty good uh, little uh, winds here. Gusts, yeah, 25, there you see, out of the northwest. So that's a chilly wind. There's actually a wind chill out there this morning. Now let's go back to the temperatures, and you see that we're only in the 30s. This is where we'll start out, low to mid-30s this morning after being in the 60s, almost 70 yesterday. We're barely going to get warmer than this, maybe hitting 40, upper 30s to maybe 40 later today. And with those winds, breezy at times, well, that's going to produce a wind chill, again, that's going to feel like it's in the 20s. You need to factor that in before you head out this morning because it is going to be a chilly day. All right, let's take a look at the uh, the maps here and uh, see what's ahead for us over the coming days. Specifically, there's the system that is departing the area. We've got the, uh, the cold front you see right here that has just gone through the Bowling Green area. It's now east of us. That's where the shower activity is. And look, here's the uh, here's that 540 line. That's the 32 degree line, the freezing line. And all of this, all of this is cold air, all of it. So there's a lot out there, but it's not going to last. Let's put this into motion. As the showers depart the area, there's the cold air settling in over us as we go through time. But look how quickly we start to recover. This is uh, into the day tomorrow and into Sunday. Then we start to see a much warmer flow coming in. And it's more of a zonal flow more than, well, it's more, really, I didn't draw those arrows right. It's more west to east. That's what we call a zonal flow because it comes off of the Pacific and comes directly east, zone to zone, zonal flow, and it's warmer. 
Then the cold air retreats, as you see here to the north. So gradually over the course of the weekend, we're going to get warmer. Each day bumps up another 10 degrees, then another 10. And we just keep going till we're back into the 70s. As you see, much of the weekend and into the beginning of next week is pretty quiet. Uh, all the precipitation pretty much is north of us or in the upper reaches of the Rockies. High pressure here. I don't see any big system. There's high pressure in the Gulf. I mean, this is uh, Monday. So what is that about? Just looking, I'm trying to do my math here. But it didn't take away. You know, we're looking at 9, 10 o'clock on Monday morning. Nice warmer flow here. Let's keep going into Tuesday. Yeah, we start to see a little blip here. There is going to be this, uh, there's going to be a trough that will extend uh, from this low pressure system. It's going to kind of just lay across Kentucky, Tennessee and squeeze out a little bit of moisture, but not a lot. So I've put in a chance of showers Monday night into Tuesday, but the better chance of rain is going to come as we get into Wednesday. And here it comes, as you see, the system, now we, we get a warm front that's going to come through the area. Now the warmer air is coming up out of the Gulf of Mexico, and that's the difference. You get the Pacific flow plus the flow coming off the Gulf of Mexico. Warmer air goes far to the north. There's the jet stream and the freezing line well to the north of us. So that's going to push that moisture back in here as we get into Wednesday, as you see there. So uh, by Wednesday into Thursday, and that's when those temperatures are going to climb into the 70s. Yes, we could be looking at another big issue here with the players being intact here with a cold front uh, and then the warmer air, of course, on top of that. And you get the classic setup for another maybe severe weather event or at least thunderstorms with heavy rain. And these lows, well, they're not incredibly stout, but I mean, 994, 995, 998, uh, that's the pressure, millibars. Uh, they're stout enough to be able to produce that, especially since there's going to be wind like this one had. You see the tight gradients here, the winds back behind it, especially, and on top of it, and look at all that icing that's potentially going to take place in places like Iowa, Northern Illinois, uh, Michigan over toward Detroit, and Lake Erie. Uh, yeah, it's going to be kind of a uh, big deal uh, again. So next week, maybe another system like the one we just had where it potentially has a lot of winter weather on top of it or behind it. And then we get the uh, warmer end of it with rain, thunderstorms, and maybe more severe weather. All right. Like I said, just be careful going in this morning with the possibility of still some standing water, especially on some of the back roads, low water fords where you have some roads that have those creeks and streams are up, rivers are up. Just watch for, especially, you know, while it's still dark, just watch for standing water, turn around, don't drown, be careful. Otherwise, uh, it's just going to be a cloudy, colder, breezy day. All right, I'm headed to the radio station, Sam, 100.7. And uh, I do have some Home Expo tickets to give away. Home Expo is coming up uh, the first weekend in March, and that's only two weekends from now. Yeah, it's not next weekend. It's the weekend after, but I've got some of those uh, passes to give away, and who knows? I'll throw in something else. Who knows? But anyway, you guys, thank you for watching as always and depending on me for your weather and for your music on the radio at Sam 100.7. God bless you. Have a great weekend. I'll have an update on the weather right here tomorrow morning about the same time or just a little bit later. In the meantime, God bless you, and I'll see you on the radio.